This Moab police body cam video was taken in August of 2021 of Gabby Petito and her boyfriend Brian Laundry after being pulled over after someone reported a domestic dispute. While the two were separated for the night, the couple got back on the road to continue on their months-long journey. Soon after, Gabby Petito was reported missing and later found strangled and buried in Teton County, Wyoming. Brian Laundry was also later found dead in a Florida reserve along with a written confession of her murder. Utah lawmakers don't want this to happen again and are hoping to pass safeguards for law enforcement to follow. Senate Bill 117 was read with amendments by Senator Todd Weiler, which would set up a lethality assessment protocol of 11 questions to determine what to do next. Uh, the last eight questions contain things like, has he ever choked you before? Uh, we know that uh, women who have been choked by their partners, there's like a 750% uh, increased risk that they're going to be uh, killed or, or severely injured uh, in the future. And so that's one of the uh, 11 questions. The parents of Gabby Petito and another victim, Mandy Maine's parents, were present at the Utah State Capitol as the Senate bill was read. Lieutenant Governor Deidre Henderson, who was Mandy's cousin, was also present. Um, the Petitos and the Maines are here uh, because they both lost a beloved daughter to uh, intimate partner domestic violence. And the hope of the bill is to change the outcome of future responses to domestic violence calls. The lieutenant governor and I uh, started uh, working together last fall to see what we could do because although we can't bring Gabby back and we can't bring Mandy back, it seems like we have a problem. And, and as I studied the details of Mandy's death, there was a lot of warning signs there, a lot of red flags there that, that we didn't catch. The Petito family has filed a $50 million Utah lawsuit saying Moab police should have done more. Police in St. George, Utah say they've already used the lethality assessment, which lists questions officers can ask and then refers them for further help. Do they have access to a weapon? Have they choked you before? You know, do they show jealous tendencies? Do you have kids together or do you have a child with someone else that this person doesn't know about? Just these questions that would elicit um, someone to become very jealous or, you know, violent if become jealous. The bill would also create a new database that would allow law enforcement to check into the alleged perpetrator's history or actions of violence. In the case of Mandy, there were several incidents involving uh, law enforcement in the 48 hours leading up to her death. At 5 a.m., he was waiting, lurking at her bus stop, and when she arrived, he shot her uh, 12 times and then came up and shot her a 13th time in the head. Uh, he drove around the block and then killed himself, and so there will be no trial or anything like that. Um, but Mandy, when she had uh, dealt with law enforcement and asked for help just two days before, they gave her the phone number for the courthouse so she could go get a protective order. Under the assessment, if the alleged victim is found to be in danger, they would be referred to a local domestic violence shelter. And based on the answers to those questions, it triggers us to have the Dove Center reach out to these victims and offer them some more resources so that they can remain safe. Um, and, and in Utah, they, they can't um, be back together until they've seen a judge. So um, to give them some time to cool off, to give them the opportunity to get a, a protective order in place, reach out to family, fi make other arrangements and stuff like that. We recommend you not go home tonight. You need to find somewhere else to sleep tonight. Do you have family? Do you have friends? Um, do you have means to get a hotel room and, and help these women realize how much danger they're potentially in? It's not an easy solution. You don't look at it and say, what? Just get out. Just leave him. Well, it's, it's, we all know it's not that easy. So, The Senate unanimously passed the bill, which also appropriates $1.7 million to develop the program and database, which will only be available for law enforcement use. It was stated that the issue is one that transcends both gender and culture and could help prevent tragedies as the one that resulted in the loss of an entire family in Enoch. I'm aware after talking to some individuals that you know, there's a possibility that something like this could have certainly made a difference in, in some of that family's life in my area, too, just recently. So I would 
I uh, rise in support. You may uh, remember last year of an international uh, Chinese student who also was murdered uh, in South Salt Lake uh, and uh, with uh, uh, some rising uh, violence that came against her and uh, something like this bill could really help to stop uh, the, the escalation of violence. The bill with amendments now goes to the House. If passed, it would go into effect by June of 2023. Melissa Anderson, Community Education News.